The Minka Fitzpatrick trade was quite the interesting one right when it happened. I mean, you know, he was a good player for Miami, but I was just a little bit interested to see how it would work out. I mean, it is unusual when you see a team that hasn't really been looking too good, just largely due to not having their starting quarterback, then go out and trade their first round pick. But at the same time, they trusted that Minka Fitzpatrick could be better than whoever they drafted next year with their first overall pick. And honestly, it's starting to look that way. I mean, Fitzpatrick has just been, I mean, his stats are unreal. The numbers he's putting up with Pittsburgh is just fantastic. Since coming over, he has five interceptions along with a forced fumble and a fumble recovery for the Steelers. And he also had a fumble and fumble recovery in his two games with the Dolphins. So it's definitely working out pretty well to say the least for the Steelers. And also worth mentioning, this Pittsburgh Steelers team is definitely not some bottom feeder team. Their defense has quietly looked like it's going to be a top five defense. And even though their offense has some issues, it you know, they're winning football games. But anyways, one of the things I really want to get into when talking about Fitzpatrick is his big playability. Because if you have a safety who can get turnovers, that can be a huge difference in the NFL. And watch how he's able to do it because it's not necessarily always just him making spectacular plays. I mean, there is an element of luck in getting turnovers, but at the same time, he kind of makes his own luck. And what I mean by that is a play like this. It's going to be a cover one robber, and that's where Fitzpatrick is on the screen, so... Typically, you might expect him to actually be the safety who's deep, but Pittsburgh's going to do something a little bit different here. They're actually going to have Fitzpatrick be in charge of covering the middle, and they'll have the other safety drop back and be the safety who's deep. But that doesn't really matter too much. What really does matter is take a look at what happens right when this ball is snapped. As you see, there is a Los Angeles player who's gotten open pretty quickly, and so Fitzpatrick sees this and realizes, hey... If Jared Goff gets off his first read and realizes there's a receiver open, then he can easily make this throw. So I have to run in that direction and try to make sure I'm covering that up. However, Goff is not going to throw it in that direction. He has another receiver that he likes and he's going to throw it there instead. But he's going to fumble the football. And so now, as you see, that's where Fitzpatrick is. And he's running to try to get the football as it's been fumbled. But what's interesting here is notice how everybody else on the field, literally everybody, is just looking around and just starting to realize what's going on. Fitzpatrick... He's already in full speed running to try to get to where the fumble will be. Because of that, he's able to beat everybody there despite the fact that he wasn't the closest to the ball at that moment and was able to run into the end zone for a touchdown. So, while that might not seem like it's necessarily an all-skill play, I mean, and in fairness, it isn't. I, if Fitzpatrick just happened to be going deep on that one and being the one safety who is deep, then there's no way he would have had a chance to get into that play. So, there definitely was a huge element of luck in it and just the fact that the ball bounced in his way, but... At the same time, the fact that he was aware enough to look around and realize that there was a fumble allowed him to get the fumble and get the touchdown out of it. So yes, it was luck, but it's also awareness, and awareness can help you get lucky, essentially. It makes your own luck, so to speak. So, you know, that's what good teams do. There is an element of luck in football, but you have to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of you, and Fitzpatrick always does that. Like, this plays kind of another one, where it's going to be zone coverage, and so for San Francisco, it's something they do a lot. They're going to run play action, and then have a receiver run basically that route right there. Since ideally the Pittsburgh Steelers linebackers will move in, this could now create a bigger window for Garoppolo to make this throw, and so that's what they're going to try to do here. And for Fitzpatrick, that's where he is. So he's in charge of covering the zone, you know, in the middle of the field, but just deep, basically. His job on this play is to make sure nobody gets past him. And so after the ball is snapped, there is going to be a window, and so Garoppolo is going to try to fit it through, but as you can just see by the still image, it's definitely tight coverage, and the throw is going to be a little bit high. But again, look at Fitzpatrick here. He's not hanging back and being ready to make a tackle. He's charging in, and is going to try to have an impact on this play. It's very quick reaction time, and because the ball ends up getting tipped up, Fitzpatrick is able to actually get the interception, and again, have a long return on it. So... You know, again, same thing. He was kind of lucky. It was kind of a right place, right time. But there's a reason he got into a place where it could be a right place, right time. And it's because he had a great break on the ball and realized what was happening very quickly. So again, was he a little bit lucky? Sure. I mean, you know, it was really the defensive back who was next to him who made the good play to knock the ball away. But at the same time, you got to take advantage of those situations. And that's what he does. And this plays another example of the point I'm bringing up where that's going to be the blocking concept. So you don't need to talk about every little detail but just basically the main thing that you're going to want to take a look at here is that it's going to be a run through the top half of the screen and the first guy who's going to be in the area who isn't getting blocked is going to be Fitzpatrick and also another thing you will notice is that this is blocked very well I mean as you see there are just 
Nobody is going to make a play on this one. You know, Fitzpatrick is going to be the guy who has to save the day, essentially. It's just Raheem Mostert going up against Fitzpatrick. This is just a one-on-one -on -one matchup. So Fitzpatrick, at this point, he's in cleanup duty. It's something he is very used to doing in Miami. Uh, does it a lot less in Pittsburgh. But, you know, he's just there to save the day and save the touchdown on this one. But again, watch how he lowers his head into an area where the ball is. And that ends up knocking the ball out and they get the fumble out of it. Again, that's something that a lot of people would say is luck, and it is, you know? I mean, if there was a back who just did a better job of hanging on to the football, well, then it's not a fumble, and then the Steelers are still playing defense. But Fitzpatrick put his helmet, essentially, in an area where it could potentially knock a ball away, and if you do that one time, the chances are it's not going to end up in a fumble. But if you do it a hundred times, the chances are several of those will end up in fumbles. And so basically that's just my point. Like, yes, it's true. He won't have five interceptions in five games for the rest of his career. You know, he's not going to average 16 interceptions a season. It seems unlikely at least, but he will get more turnovers than your average person will because he puts himself in these positions. And also should be mentioned that it's not like he's only getting lucky turnovers or getting fluky situations he's also just having your traditional great play interceptions like take a look at this one there's only one safety deep so that's for Fitzpatrick and he's his job in this one is pretty simple actually just make sure you're staying further deep than everybody else and then potentially try to make a play if there's a play there but absolutely make sure that there is not going to be any Miami Dolphin who's further deep than you are that's basically what his job is here and this is actually going to be key because there are two Dolphins running deep routes right here. And this is actually going to work out decently well for Miami. I mean, as you see, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to hand off one of those receivers deep. So now this now means that Fitzpatrick, he basically just has a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And Mayan Fitzpatrick actually kind of likes this route because he has a receiver running deep and he's already running as fast as he can. He's already at his top speed, whereas Fitzpatrick... He's not really at a top speed. He's kind of just backpedaling back a little bit. So Ryan Fitzpatrick feels as though he can just lob one deep and then potentially his receiver can outrun Fitzpatrick who currently doesn't even have his shoulders turned around just yet. However, it's not going to work out really at all. I mean, Fitzpatrick just is too quick, is able to leap up and get that interception. And that's kind of what he can bring to the table as well. Just that talent of being able to, despite not being at top speed, accelerate so quickly and really... Acceleration can be key in every position, but also as a safety because it can result in you just making a great break on the ball and getting an interception like that one. And it also helped that the throw was a little bit further deep, but as a whole, that was really just more of a great play by Minka Fitzpatrick than anything else. And one final play I want to talk about, this is actually a unique situation where the way this play is going to work is that Pittsburgh is going to be in a cover three zone right here. And for the Colts, they actually have a route concept that is designed to be the cover three zone. So this is kind of a good situation for them. The way it's going to work is they're going to have a receiver just simply run that route right there, which in theory is going to get the corner who's in charge of covering the bottom right hand corner of the screen to just make sure that he's covering up that route. And then because of that, they can simply just send their tight end right over there. And there should be a window where you can potentially make this throw. Hoyer likes this idea, it's where he's going to look, and watch what happens right when this ball is snapped. As of right here, those two Colts are getting ready to, you know, split up and go in two different directions, and so for a defensive back, you obviously can't cover them both, so you can do your best to try to take them both out of the way, but the reality is, Hoyer knows that you're probably going to stay further to the bottom half of the screen, so therefore, hit your tight end and try to hopefully get some yards or potentially even a touchdown. But look at Fitzpatrick here. Look at what he's doing. He is looking down and ready to try to make a break on this ball. He sees what's going on and he feels as though he could potentially get an interception if things go his way. It is also worth mentioning that if Hoyer just at this point were to look up to the top half of the screen, he probably gets a touchdown right here. But Fitzpatrick reads Hoyer's eyes and knows Hoyer's going to the bottom half of the screen. So he even cheats a little bit further to the bottom half of the screen as well. Because they have the same thing going on just on each side of the field, but Hoyer is spending a little bit too much of his focus on one side of the field, and Fitzpatrick is taking advantage of that by cheating a little bit in that direction. Because then when Hoyer does make the throw, Fitzpatrick is able to jump up, intercept it, and he's even able to return it all the way for a touchdown because he does have that speed. So that's just kind of what Fitzpatrick has brought to the table for the Pittsburgh Steelers so far here in 2019. You know, when he was playing for the Dolphins, I, I made a comparison that he was kind of like 
Vonde Barber when the Bucks transitioned him to safety, where it just seemed like, despite being on a terrible defense, he was just the guy who was in charge of just making the tackles. Obviously, this is at the end of Barber's career, not when he was actually having a good defense around him, but that's kind of the comparison I made with Fitzpatrick, but now we're kind of seeing Fitzpatrick play just with an actual defense around him, and he is thriving so far. He trusts that he can make those big plays, and clearly he can. And honestly, the Pittsburgh Steelers, their schedule is not that difficult. They actually do have a chance at the playoffs here. They play the Browns twice, they play the Bengals, they play the Jets, and the Cardinals. So, I mean, you can't say that for sure that they would win all five of those games. Their other two games are against the Bills and the Ravens, who are both currently in a playoff spot. And, by the way, the Steelers are currently in a playoff spot, although tied for a playoff spot. But if Pittsburgh does win the five games that they're playing against teams that are under 500, which is, you know, two against the Browns, Bengals, Cardinals, and Jets, that puts them at 10-6. and six. That probably puts them in the playoffs. You don't know, but there's a very good chance that puts them in the playoffs, and obviously, who knows, you could beat the Bills. The Bills have looked human at times, and the Ravens would be a tough one, but that's also Week 17. Maybe they'll bench their starters. Who knows? So, uh, the Steelers, I mean, this season is definitely far from over. I think it's a testament to what Mike Tomlin has done. He just is a tremendous head coach, but it also should be mentioned that Fitzpatrick has absolutely had a huge role in this team's turnaround, and he's been a lot of fun to watch.